The code that you are seeing on screen now is being typed automatically with a new tool that I just built for Angular. So I often want to show code snippets in my video tutorials and having parts of that code being typed out on screen just looks a little more fun and interesting, but making typos and mistakes and trying to get everything to work out nicely with the audio is not so fun. So that's why I built this tool and I actually used it for the video I published last week. Uh, this video is going to be a little devlog about how I built this rough prototype my philosophy around developing and validating an idea with a minimum viable product and setting it up for long-term success. So this is just a very bare bones MVP. I spent maybe eight hours or so over a week researching and creating this prototype. And the basic idea for now, at least, is that you paste a code snippet in the editor here. You specify which of those lines you want to replay and then you can just hit this replay lines button and you can record your screen with your usual screencast software that you use. So the point of this very rough and simple MVP or minimum viable product is to see if anybody is actually interested in using this and also to start building up an audience of people who are interested. So it's easy to get caught up in adding features and not wanting to release until you've got the final product you were dreaming of. And then after a year, releasing that to an audience of nobody and finding out nobody actually wants to use it. So an MVP allows you to quickly get market feedback to either can the project entirely or help steer it in a direction that results in a product that people actually want to use. So let's talk about how I approach building this MVP. So in many of my videos, I drum on about how great I think test-driven development is and creating smart and dumb components, reactive code, adhering to the single responsibility principle and so on. And for an MVP like this, I pretty much just throw all of that out of the window. So I'm pretty strict on the rule that for any code I want to maintain and update over time, I will use a TDD approach to develop it. However, using TDD and making other good architectural choices is hard when you have no idea what you're doing, how you're going to do it, or even if you'll end up continuing the project. So following a test-driven development approach for this prototype would likely have slowed me down a great deal and had no real payoff at the end. So what I do in this situation, either where I want to create an experimental proof of concept or validate an idea, is create something that is explicitly a prototype app. So the point is that this code will only ever be used for the MVP. And then once I have validated that I'm going to continue the project, I will restart a new application that is developed from scratch with TDD and uses the other important architectural concepts that I usually talk about. So the trick is actually following through with this and restarting from scratch. And it is tempting to just push forward with the messy code base whilst promising or lying to yourself that you'll fix it all up later. And it's especially hard if your project does actually start to get some traction because then you're not going to want to sort of reset and spend time doing this properly. You're just going to want to quickly get out more and more features. So this prototype is basically just one giant mess of a single bloated component that does almost everything. Uh, it's not really reactive. It has no tests. It certainly doesn't adhere to the single responsibility principle and it violates a whole bunch of other stuff that I advocate for. So I actually kind of like making this intentionally architecturally bad because it makes it easier to actually throw this code away in the end rather than being tempted to reuse it. Okay, so let's talk quickly about the project architecture here. Uh, even though this is a rough prototype, I'm actually using an NX workspace. Uh, I generally just like using NX by default uh, for my projects. There isn't really any extra overhead here that slows me down. And for this specific situation, it's also kind of nice because once I'm done with the prototype, I can still easily reference its code when I'm building out the real application. So the prototype app can just continue to live in this workspace. It just won't be used. So there is nothing wrong with reusing code from the rough prototype, uh, just as long as I am first adding appropriate tests for it in the new code base. Uh, likely I will end up copying and pasting a few key portions of the prototype into the real application. So I just have this single Angular application in an NX workspace. I'm not worrying about splitting this application up into NX libraries yet. Again, this is all just intended to be experimental throwaway code. So for a deploy process, I usually use this little plugin I've published that allows me to manually deploy my code base and Lambda functions to Netlify by running a command like nx uh, deploy ionic start or whatever the project name is. 
But for now, I have just set up a build script in the package.json file. And Netlify is going to uh, call this um, script when it is deploying the site and it's going to uh, build the production version of the application and then deploy from the distribution folder. So this means that I have to actually manually go to my Netlify dashboard and trigger a build rather than my usual process, which allows me to just run something like NX deploy prototype. But again, just trying to keep everything quick and simple here. And this project isn't going to be used in the long run anyway. Okay, so now let's take a quick look through how this code actually works. Now, the key part here is the usage of the open source uh, Monaco editor, uh, which I think is what VS Code actually uses behind the scenes or some version of it at least, I'm not entirely sure, but this allowed me to easily set up a code editor that looks and feels like the typical VS Code kind of experience. So although people will primarily just be pasting snippets in here, uh, the cool thing about this editor is that it also has the standard VS code features like auto completion. So if I go and type stuff into the editor here, I'm going to see stuff popping up just like I would normally in VS code. And likewise, when I replay this, we are also going to see those things popping up through the replay as well. So the juicy part of this app is how the code is actually replayed. So this is something I'll be looking to refine in the proper version of the application. But unsurprisingly, if you are familiar with my videos, I am using an RxJS stream to do this. So the basic idea is that I split the code snippet supplied into an array, and then I create a lines to add array. And so we take a look at what lines the user wants to replay, which um, replay line numbers they specified. And I remove the corresponding lines from the original code snippet and add them to the lines to add array. So after this step, I'm left with a code snippet that has the lines the user wants to replay removed and an array containing the lines that need to be added back in. So I then create a new stream from the lines to add array. And then from each line, I create a stream of the string for that line, which is what will give me a stream of individual characters being emitted. So if we look at the code snippet here, for example, first I'm creating a stream of say this entire line, for example, and then I'm taking that entire line and returning a stream that will emit one character at a time. And that is what allows me to create this uh, typing effect. So there is some logic involved here in determining where exactly to insert uh, each character in the editor. But perhaps the most interesting thing here is the usage of the pairwise operator. So this operator pairs each emission on a stream with the previous emission from that stream. So I'm using this to detect when I reach the end of the line as the emission an individual character is paired with will be null at this point. So at the beginning of this line, for example, with uh, the const here, I'm going to get an emission with a C and the previous emission is going to be null. And so that's how I know that I need to insert a new line. And I also started working on another RxJS stream up here. So I'm gonna briefly show this to you, but I canned it for now as I was getting too carried away. Uh, the idea is that this will be a big UX improvement that will allow the user to select a range of lines by clicking and dragging on the editor. So we would be able to do something like this and drag down to select the lines one through five, for example. So I think this should be a much nicer experience than manually typing in the lines, but I don't think perfecting this is really in the spirit of the minimum viable product. The code is interesting though. Uh, basically I have streams of uh, the mouse down, mouse up and mouse move events that are originating from the editor element. And so the idea here is that I want to start listening when the mouse down event occurs. For example, the user has started a click drag. I then start listening for mouse move events to track where the user is moving the mouse. And then I stop listening when the mouse up event is triggered. So I'm actually logging out the uh, result of this in the console here. So if I just clear this and again, we'll just drag over one, two, three, for example, you can see that one, two, three is emitted. Uh, we can do four, five, six, and I can also just click on individual numbers as well. So I'll likely use this in the future as the way to select which lines will be replayed. I just need to sort of polish this off a bit more. And again, it isn't exactly something I think I should be spending a lot of time on before I get this in front of people to see if they actually like it. So what's next? Uh, my main rule here is that this prototype will be developed no further. Uh, it is tempting to continue adding features, but the further you go down that path, the harder it becomes to reset and create the project properly. 
Uh, it's hard enough to avoid tech debt as it is, so why saddle your project with it immediately? And a lot of the benefit of TDD isn't just from the test protecting your code, it is from the architectural improvements from having TDD steer your decisions in the first place. So apart from any very quick and necessary changes, this prototype code will never be changed. Uh, instead, I'll be creating a new application in this mono repo. That will be the real application and it will be built from the beginning using TDD and all the usual important architectural concepts. So whether or not I continue building this depends on whether people are interested in it or not. Uh, that's the beauty of the MVP approach. It might just save you from a whole bunch of wasted time. Although even if there isn't much interest in the tool itself, I may still continue its development if people find this devlog series interesting and we can just pretend we are building a product that people actually want. So I'm kind of skewing the data a bit by making this video, but if this tool is something you are interested in, feel free to go ahead and drop your email over at replaymycode.com. And as always, if you found this video interesting, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to catch you in the next video.